What's up guys? Welcome back to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. So today, we're going over one of our favorite actors, Chris Pratt's movie, Tomorrow War. What is this? It's my, uh, my Instagram. Oh, can I do that too? Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, That's cool. Uh, <laughs> watch, get rid of it. I'm bringing it back. Dude, that's sweet. Have Sean bring up his. Sean, do it. <laughs> <laughs> now get rid of it. Wipe it away, wipe it away. <laughs> the power of technology. That's awesome. Welcome back. Like I said, we're here doing Tomorrow War. Uh, this is a great movie on Amazon Prime. You know, we've here at the channel. Some of us have a love-hate relationship with some of Chris Pratt's work, but I uh, happen to be on the love side of that. I will not be commenting on any of that. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into this movie. You're a great candidate. The only thing you're missing is private sector experience. Which we have to say is an important part of what we're looking for. Oh, guys, guys. That's why we had to make a tough choice. Found someone else. His background, education, All right, so this is something that a lot of people don't really think about when you get out of the military, right? And that is like, no matter what you did in the military, people in the civilian world don't give a fuck. Like, they don't, they don't care. They don't know. So, like, when I got out, you know, as a Green Beret, you think, like, oh, we're going to have, like, just put Green Beret on the resume. We'll have all these opportunities or whatever. And then real quick, you find out, like, especially as a Green Beret, people are like, what is that? Like, what does that mean? And so it's, you realize, like, you go from, like, being the perceived, like, near the top of the food chain to just, like, complete rookie. Um, so in this scene, to see that he's going for one of his dream jobs, something he's been working for for a long time, something that he's probably extremely capable and qualified to do, mm -hmm. they're like, nope, we went for somebody that has more civilian sector experience. Um, and that's something that I think a lot of guys have trouble with. They well, first off, a lot of guys don't realize, or a lot of people don't realize happens, but then they have a lot of uh issues and trouble dealing with it when it does happen because it, it, it honestly it takes a mental toll on you because, like, like I said, you go from feeling like you're up here to then feeling like you're absolutely at the bottom and having to start over again. So, I think that was a pretty accurate portrayal of, of this, you know, in this scene. A lot of it, too, like, people don't realize that a lot of well, first off, people think that our experience is 100% tactical, right? They think of military and they think, you guys are just going out, running missions, doing the stuff you see on TV, but they don't realize like behind the scenes, all the stuff we're doing, like all the leadership things we're doing, all the like administrative work that we're doing. Like a lot of these, like, you know, myself, I was in both, you know, being a Green Beret, then being in the corporate world afterwards, a lot of the skills are extremely transferable, but people that don't know, that haven't done both sides, they don't really know. So like when I was hiring for my team, if I saw somebody was a veteran, like like he already, or this person already was a step above everybody else. Just cause it's like, you know, we, for one, we gotta take care of our own. And for two, I know that the experience that they have is gonna be well uh, or easily uh, transferred to other areas. So it's unfortunate, but it's, you know, fact of the matter. If you're in now, just be prepared, start dealing or getting ready for it. And when you're getting ready to get out, make sure you're able to uh, translate those experiences over and there's a lot of organizations and a lot of you know the the military has a lot of programs to help people transition out so make sure you're taking that seriously or you could end up sitting on a couch next to me reviewing movies <laughs> you could so that's a whew. we are you 30 years in the future. We are fighting a war. Our enemy is not human. We need you. Our fathers, mothers, and grandparents. We need you. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> I never thought about that when I saw this. Just watching a movie or watching a, a game and all of a sudden some of the people just in, like appear on the field. And so, like, first, I'm like, did they just happen to appear here? Like, that's poor timing and placement. Uh -huh. But I guess, I don't know. It seems like maybe they plan to come here so they could have, like, a wide audience. I think that they were very kind 
uh, in the way that they portrayed how the public would react watching it on TV. Yes. As if we would just all collectively pay attention to what's going on and not think for two seconds that it's a hoax or it's some weird entertainment ploy. It, that's what I was thinking. It, re, it looks like like if it was the Super Bowl, I'd think it's like the halftime show, like some new Janet Jackson fucking bit or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like we're about to see Janet Jackson's titty. <laughs> like again. all of a sudden, do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> everybody starts dancing together. She's somehow miraculously hooked into the audio video. Yeah. So like she has a microphone already implanted on her that's connected to the Hello, PA. people of the world. Hello. Like, did they show up with a camera crew on the other side that came out of a different portal? Everybody just appeared at the same time? Some dude like me was back there and he's like... Oh, future Abel over here. <laughs> 12 months ago, we had no idea how those words would change everything about our daily lives. Immediately, jump facilities were established around the globe to send the world's military into the future and help fight the white spikes. Only a handful of troops survived. Since only 50% of the military are qualified to jump, civilians were needed to support the war effort. So the world's leaders agreed to institute the first worldwide draft. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, just, just the idea, like, forget about the tomorrow war, but, you know, it wasn't an era that we grew up in, but the idea of a draft, uh -huh. right? Like, that's kind of like... I don't know, like, it's just weird that one day you might get a letter and be like, oh, oh, fuck, like, I gotta go to war. Mm -hmm. Because, right? you know, since we've grown up, it's been a volunteer thing. Right. And so it's just weird because, you know, when you get the, the whole draft, then everybody's in there. And, you know, a lot of people in, like, today's society are not really cut out for that, you know? Right. So to think that you're going to send them all to war is just kind of crazy. And then this one, they say 20% survival rate. That's fucking sucks. That's basically a death sentence almost. Yeah. That would suck. And yeah. then you gotta go to the future. What the fuck? Like, go to Afghanistan, that's one thing, but now you're going to the fucking future? 28 years in the so, future? Let's just say you have experience to begin with. So you got like you, let's say it's you, Sean and Tom. Now you guys are going to the future and you got me on your team. <laughs> <laughs> right you got the fourth guy who pops in who's a civilian hey guys <laughs> what's just, up i'm just like all right what do i do do i just stand here and look cool that's what you guys do right <laughs> do i watch my six i don't know if you guys saw my my cqb uh tutorial in bass pro shop in the middle of bass pro with a salt gun <laughs> Not a salt gun. A, an, an, a, a salt, salt rifle. <laughs> a salt rifle. That you kill mosquitoes with. Ah, watch my six as we're buying coffee. <laughs> yeah, I did it on a quad. People were looking at me funny. Any attempt to evade the draft or tamper with the device will result in your imprisonment or your spouse or dependent of legal age taking your place. Oh, damn. Put your personal affairs in order and report for They are not today. fucking around. Do you have any questions? Get free to go. Hell yeah, I got some fucking questions. <laughs> oh my god, are you kidding me? This guy walks in here, has no idea what's going on. Uh -huh. They stick this thing or they whatever they did, they did a test. Every, all of a sudden, they start murmuring in the background, and then they put this thing on his arm. Yeah. And they're like, you have to go, and if you don't, then your spouse or dependent of legal age is going to take your place. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I got some questions. <laughs> this is a fucking lot that you just threw at me right now. I'm going to need a moment to digest what's going on. All of a sudden, I'm going to the future to fight some mythical creature. I don't even know what it looks like. And then this thing that's on his arm, and what's crazy is I didn't realize that the deployments were so short. Uh-huh. Like, you're, you're going for a seven-day deployment, which to me shows that that's fucking bad. Yeah. If they're only sending people for seven days at a time, like, that's not a good sign. Here's an alternate theory. Imagine this. You're in the middle of, or the beginning stages of a very nasty divorce. Yes. <laughs> they're like... That <laughs> <laughs> took me a second to hit. Like, the paperwork hasn't gone through yet. Exactly. You're still technically married. Be like, your chance, you're going to lose half of your shit. Oh, my God. Court would be a fuck show and a half. Can you imagine that? You'd be like, do you have any questions? You'd be like, nope, I have all the information I need to know. Seems your wife has declined to uh, jump. So it's you. Uh, you're the spouse. You have to go. Are you fucking kidding me? She's like, I hope the waitress was worth it. <laughs> 
This is what we're doing. You, me, and Mary, we have to run. You have 24 hours. I don't run from the government. You know someone who does. We have to. Damn. I'm not asking him for a goddamn thing. Do not Faja? ask for yourself. Ask <laughs> for me. Ask for me. Stop. I don't know how to run from the government, Abel. Yeah? <laughs> what are you alluding to? Terminalist. He does know how to run from the government. He does it in Terminalist. I have no idea what And I know, because you didn't watch it. Watch what? Terminalist, Abel. I don't know what that is. The Terminalist. The terminal list. You know what that is. Is that like some sort of a medical thing? You're, like, is that you're is that such like, an asshole? Is that for like a, waiting for a liver, or what does that mean? Like people. You are, know what I'm talking about. Sean doesn't know what you're talking about either. We've, I have never heard of such show or phrase or whatever it is that you're talking about. I'm pretty sure you're well aware of what. By I By the mean. way, isn't Chris Pratt just amazing in this so far? Chris Pratt is amazing in everything. I mean, his his acting, yeah, yeah, abso absolutely. You know, I mean, he really is just a gift. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't drink while you do this. I wish Stevie Nicks would show up in her birthday suit with a jar of pickles and a bottle of baby oil. <laughs> what? That's what I'm thinking. What? That's what I'm talking about. Dude, that's why I love old people. Old people have like the most random, like just off the wall sayings that don't mean anything, but apparently mean everything at the same time. I feel like he read my diary. <laughs> it's either Stevie Nicks or B. Arthur. I was, oh. Both at the same time. <laughs> I wish Stevie Nicks would show with a jar of pickles and a bottle of baby oil. Fucking judge me. Okay. Sounds like a party, if you ask me. Yeah. That's a good time. <laughs> Comms, you'll be contacted as soon as you land. Some of these guys are very green, but they all go by cancer. The research crazy. facility is under attack. It's the last lab left studying the white spikes. If it's lost, the war is lost. <laughs> Fuck that noise. I know, oh my god. All right. All right, so put yourself in this situation for a second. Fuck no. Like, that's wild. So you've got Chris Pratt, who's uh, Dan Forrester. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the other guy in the red shirt. I can't remember his name, but he's a multi-deployment veteran, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've got a ton of untrained civilians yeah. that are just getting thrown into this with very, very minimal training. Right. Like, in my opinion, that is one of the most dangerous situations you can be in. Because you have all these people with you, with guns, with weapons, that have no idea how to use them. The part that I don't understand is they have so much time. So why wasn't this set up in a way where you would have people long-term training that are going to have to go? So the draft would mm -hmm. essentially draft them into the military. Um, they could live simultaneously with their family and just be in the military at this point. Like, that's that's the gig. That's what happens. But right. you're training all the way leading up to your seven-day deployment. Instead of just, you're getting drafted. Right, like, I, I don't understand hours. why they set it up to a point, in a way, where you, when you get drafted, you would find out right then, and then you train for a day, and then you go. It yeah. just seems they, like... They wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. That's just you wouldn't, not feasible. You wouldn't, because obviously, you're going to have all the percentages that they quoted in, in the beginning of this make perfect fucking sense. Yeah. You're sending a bunch of people who don't know what the they're fuck they're doing. They're probably shooting each other on accident. Yeah, I would just be standing there when I landed and just be like... What do I do with this? And point it that way and push the button. Like, I tried shooting it, but it didn't shoot. <laughs> Yeah, it's just that to me when I see this, you got a couple trained people and everybody else is completely untrained. Mm -hmm. Like that is my biggest fear more so than the white spikes are the people that are with me at that point. So I just it's I, I think your method is a lot more practical and more as more in line of with reality, I guess, yeah. if this was the actual actually happen. Yeah, if that was the actual end goal, I would hope that I mean, you know more than I do, but I would just hope that our government and military would have a plan in place that would at least send trained people into the future yeah. to fight aliens. <laughs> Look, I was just a cog in the wheel. I don't know. They made some pretty crazy decisions. They, I, like, I mean, oh. and the thing that kind of gets me is that they also, like you said, there's a there's a guy who's done multiple deployments. Yeah. So they, they obviously have intel on what who they're fighting, what they're doing. Yeah. But yet, <laughs> as you're going to see in this movie, um, they've done nothing to prepare people for what they're going to be going up against. That analogy itself is pretty realistic to the real military mm. like we do things we make the same mistakes over and over again and it's just like the people in charge don't learn from those mistakes the so maybe is, maybe it's uh you know it's showing like a little bit of i guess reflection on reality the real question is if you have an affair in the future does it count 
technically didn't happen now. <laughs> you're, gonna be mad at me. you're gonna be mad at me for, for for hooking up with a chick 50 years from now or however many years you're jumping in the it's like it's like you can't get mad at me for another 47 years exactly i don't want to hear it this never happened <laughs> oh the intricacies of time travel you don't think about what happens in time travel stays in time travel you're right yeah it's the new vegas it's <laughs> That's just my, uh, that's my two cents anyway. Oh, that's awesome. I never thought about that. Hey, something's wrong with the upper coordinates. Oh my God. Damn. Oh, welcome to government spending. <laughs> exactly. Damn, so they said they're gonna get dropped. They said, be prepared for a drop. You're gonna land like 10 feet off, the, or you're gonna get dropped 10 feet off the ground. These motherfuckers got dropped from like hundreds of feet off. Mm -hmm. Like dudes are just getting, just splattered all over the place. Yeah. Fuck. Just, other things they should have figured out in the span of a <laughs> fucking year while jumping untrained civilians into the future oh. to fight an alien war. You're just like, all right, I'm going to fight the aliens. The next thing you know, you're just like free falling through skyscrapers. Not to you're mention, like, have you ever jumped 10 feet off the ground? Like, have you ever like jumped off of something that's 10, 10 feet, feet up? It's a considerable height to, to fall. You know how many shin splints would <laughs> fucking happen on impact? How many you know, ankles would be rolled the second they showed up? Higher than the roof, for sure. Like, you're getting fucked up. 10 feet is fucking high. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm like six feet tall. So four feet more than that, and then jumping on the fucking ground on, like, concrete? It's like, you guys kind of developed a better drop system? How much speed do you already have when you're going through that fucking, that fuck tunnel? Like, <laughs> I still think it's hilarious that they are portraying this as if the government would have taken that whole thing in the beginning seriously. Like, Oh, for sure. Like, they would have had to, like, they would have been like, all right, we went to the Super Bowl, and uh, we magically talked to the entire world, and they don't believe us. There's Facebook groups online that are saying we don't exist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> naturally what happened. Uh, Donald Trump is running on a campaign <laughs> about the fact that we're not real. It's like the scenario from uh, the movie Don't Look Up. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. is an amazing movie. Yeah, awesome I think it's movie. probably the most accurate portrayal of what would really happen if there was a yeah. comet right now headed for Earth. I think that's 100% what would yeah. happen. Like, oh, it's not coming. It's a hoax. <laughs> like, all the that. media would tell them to go fuck themselves yeah. because it's not happy. Um, there would be mass amounts of people on the internet in groups basically saying the whole thing is fake, like the moon. Yep. Just like the moon doesn't <laughs> exist, right? The moon's like a holographic projection. You know, there's a whole there. group of people that believe that. The earth is round or flat. Just saying, look into it. <laughs> look into it. Eddie Bravo, look into it. Some people will know what I'm talking about. The moon's a shady motherfucker. I don't know. I don't know if I trust it. Janet, I'm going to need your help. Give me that map of the lab now. My research team is stranded in a lab by your location, and they are surrounded by the enemy. So you and your unit are now on a rescue mission. And since you have experience running CSAR, I need you to get my team out of there. You got it, Dan? Stop to that command. Listen, everybody, we're on a CSAR, all right? It's combat search and rescue. Our destination is this research facility. I need every able-bodied person on this roof. CSAR, combat search and rescue. You familiar with that? I'm not. So CSAR, yeah, it's literally just an acronym. It means combat search and rescue. So um, mm -hmm. they're just now, instead of going on an offensive mission where they're right. going to attack the white spikes, they're going to do a search and rescue looking for whatever research team that they have. Um, so that, that's all CSAR means. I think what's really cool is the portrayal of him being um, prior special operations yeah. and taking control of the situation, taking charge, and then just yeah. basically shooting out orders to people he knows are going to follow them yeah. and then having a plan. I think that's really cool. I think that's probably a very accurate yep. portrayal of how somebody would deal with that situation in that time. Given yeah, for sure. You're going to go for the guys that are going to be your biggest assets, like mm -hmm. the guy that's been there multiple times. Right. And you're going to, you know, everybody, you're going to give him a small piece of the pie. Like, you're not going to command everybody, but you're going to split everybody up. And you're like, hey, you take these five people, you take these five people. You're going to disseminate information. You're going to control the pieces. And then you're going to, you know, accomplish whatever mission that you have to accomplish or at least attempt to. Mm -hmm. 
So that, that's good. And I, I do like how they relied on his special operations experience. Wouldn't that be cool if just like for some strange reason, all of the Karens and just douchey people of the world would, <laughs> would like miraculously be selected for the draft first <laughs> and we could just purge ourselves of all these stupid <laughs> fucking people. Just start fresh. Right out of the gate. Like just start <laughs> dumping everybody. Like Paula Deen, right through that fucking portal. Go make cookies in the future. <laughs> Hey, I like Paula Deen. She makes a mean fucking butter casserole. She also throws a mean plantation party. <laughs> I'm not touching that one. Car on fire, a scooter, no alien. Have that. A scooter. No. You're like really, Susie? Yeah. What about the aliens? Was scooter a pertinent information <laughs> at that moment in time? So right there, what was like looking at this tactically? Yeah. Clearly, these are all untrained people, right? The right. trained people, you've got, you've got Dan Forrester here, mm -hmm. and you've got Dorian. They're, they've got their guns up, they're ready to go, right? And then you look at everybody else that's with them, and they're just like sheep following the herd. Right. Um, so nobody is picking up any kind of security. If you're moving in an area like this, like you want to have your guns strategically faced all over the place in case yeah. the threat comes from anywhere, right? So you've got people that are looking straight ahead, you've got people that are looking up, you've got people that are looking this way, you've got people looking back. So they've got a couple guns up front from these two guys that are mm -hmm. trained, and then somehow, or luckily, you've got one guy, I don't know who that is in the back, but he had enough like wherewithal to turn around as they're moving down and like look backwards mm -hmm. while everybody's going this way. He's at least got a little bit of rear security. So generally, if everybody's moving this way, like I said, you're all gonna have guns in every direction. Mm -hmm. But it's just, you know, highlighting the fact that a lot of these people are like not trained at all, which is kind of a liability in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. So at least you got a couple people that have their head on the swivel. But I just thought that was pretty interesting to see. Right here, all day, all hard drives, every day. And train the lab, what are we looking for? I need all the biological material from lab one and I those blue ampules for lab two. On me, lab two. So that was cool. It was, you know, again, you know, back on the SSE topic, which we reached in, uh, I think, Gray Man. Gray Man. Right? So this one, they're going in. He's like, I need all hard drives, all whatever else he said, all hard drives, all whatever else. And so, like, they're going through and they're conducting, like, a hasty SSE. So a hasty sensitive site exploitation, grabbing as much intel as they can. Clearly, he's got his mission to get those be uh, blue ampules or capsules, whatever. Uh -huh. um, but he's directing everybody else to grab everything else as, as well. So that was pretty cool to see some more tactical information, you know, being thrown down. And I wonder when they shot this as far as, like, the timeline when they shot this and when they shot Terminal List. Because I wonder, like if he was able to bring some things that he learned from terminal list into this or if they just had technical direction you know to teach them things like this in this movie as well i don't know it'd be pretty cool to see i have no clue what you're talking about i know for an actual you need to head left at the next intersection you don't want to fight building oh, from the north and the south fuck you <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, dude, they're running after right. them. They would catch them so fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's me in the future. I just love, I love how she's like, we're gonna mark it with red smoke. And then it cuts and you see that guy, he's like, oh fuck, <laughs> we're in the red smoke. <laughs> this is the red smoke. Not only do you got these fucking aliens chasing you, <laughs> but now you got your own bombs about to drop on you. Dude, <laughs> fuck that. Did you see those things? Dude, those that was spikes? fucking frightening. That is super frightening. It looks like a character from Dragon Ball Z. I and can't remember which one, but... Dude, they're just like bouncing off the walls and like coming at you like all fast. Like that is not cool. And then I, they got these tentacles that like shoot the spikes. I know that they're portraying like people could run away from them, like running down the street. But... No. no, that thing, they would kill you before you got a quarter mile down the street. Yeah, as fast as they, they are. Run down a highway. Oh, I hate spiders, dude. Sick. Tactically, one thing I noticed in this scene uh -huh. and throughout the movie is that all of their guns are fully automatic. 
Okay. So what that means, obviously, or what that means is you squeeze the trigger once, and as long as you hold the have the trigger depressed, mm -hmm. it's firing rounds. Um, but one thing you don't see, and I understand it's a movie, so the, you know you got to take some liberties. But one thing you don't see are many reloads. Okay. Because when you have the, a gun like that on fully auto, like you pull the trigger for uh, just a couple seconds and that magazine's empty. Because okay. you'll go through 30 rounds. Most of those magazines are probably 30 rounds or so. You'll go through those, you'll fly through them on full auto. Mm. And so another issue, so with full auto, not only are you expending a lot of rounds, so you frequent reloads, but you're also not very accurate. So it's a lot of like spray and pray. What right. we talked about in some of the other movies where you're just looking and you're just holding it down and hoping that you hit something so the fact that you know they're always full auto but you don't see much like reloads you know again it's a movie so i get that they're taking some liberties but it's not very realistic um generally a lot of gun manufacturers will make it so you can do like a three round burst mm -hmm. and so that way each time you pull the trigger you get three rounds which helps you conserve rounds and also stay on target um but you know going full auto is rarely the right answer unless you know, they, they teach you full auto is like la a, a last case scenario, worst okay. case scenario. So you got aliens coming down on you, then you might go full auto. Yeah. But you're going to be reloading. Wait, where? Where are you people from? Same place that you're from. You're right. I'm Mary Forrester. I'm Mary Forrester. You got, uh... Old? Yeah, you look great. It's his daughter! I'm not gonna lie. When I was watching the movie, I thought it was sick to begin with. But yeah. when they hit me with that, it was like full on... Yeah, no, that's wild. I did, like, I did not see, call me stupid, but I did not see that coming. Neither did I. When it happened. And Neither did I. In, a, in like a world where it's so difficult to stand out and make your script just a little bit different from everybody else's, Yeah. I did not see that coming, and I thought it was a really, really cool twist. Yeah, and I, I love the way like they kind of introduced it, because it's like, it's slowly happening, and I feel like I was discovering it like with him. Yeah. And then, yeah. like, being a father of a daughter at the same time, yeah. I'm like, oh, like, I know. That's my little girl. I think that's why it hits you so hard because I have a daughter as well. So, like, when you're watching it, you're like, what would that be like if I know. you're in the future and your daughter is now fully grown? But not only that, she's like a commanding officer. Yeah. In like this whole thing that's that, going on. You're just like, that, that is. Awesome, and I I love the twist that they did. Like you said, I, I think that was awesome that they did that. Yeah, and then shortly after, you find out that you were a piece of shit dad. And then it just all comes crashing all down. All comes crashing down. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? You are to die. I know. I'm Believe me, I've thought of everything, and this is the only way. I'm asking you to do what no one else is willing to do. So what I don't understand on this, right? So she's asking him to take the toxin back to the past, mm -hmm. to mass produce it, to prevent the aliens from proliferating in the future. Right. But she's also making it seem like when that happens, she's going to die because the aliens are going to kill her and everybody else in existence. Right. In the future. Yeah. So what I can't wrap my mind around is if he goes back to the past and stops it from happening, won't that save her in the future? This is why you should watch the Avengers. But no, apparently Kurt is too good for Marvel movies and superhero movies. Otherwise, he would know. How time travel works. I like Fast and Furious movies. I don't know. If they start traveling to the future, then maybe I'll watch. All right, listen. This is how it works. This is the the branch of time. Yeah. Okay, now every time something happens that's not supposed to, a little branch comes off and creates an alternate timeline. Okay. Okay, this is one of those alternate timelines. So if he goes back in the past, which is the main one, and fixes everything here... This one still exists off over here to the right. So the same, you're going to have the same outcome, just a different 
method to get to the outcome. So when he goes back in the past, his main world, and fixes it, right? That one just keeps going with its future. Now this one that branched off over here will also exist. So she'll still be over there being taken over by the aliens because he's only affecting his main timeline, which is still progressing. But Theirs that, exists on its own because it's still there. It doesn't just like implode on itself. I don't know, Abel. Oh, I don't know, Abel. I'm telling you, if you, just, if you just watched a couple of movies, you would know what's going on. Is this no. part of the Marvel Universe? No, but it's still a good explanation for what's going on here. I don't believe it. No, well, you wouldn't have all these questions if you just watched. I'm not movies. subscribing. I'm, I'm not subscribing to that. Yeah. This time, I'm not gonna hide. It's not even loaded. It, well, it's not loaded. It's a pressurized cabin. Why would I load it in the cabin to put those in thing and everybody sucked out? <laughs> You're smart. Drop it to 1,000 feet. Okay, guys. So we're looking for like geothermal anomalies, okay? Anything weird. Like I just don't know where they got the snowmobiles from. Like, I'm assuming they flew with them there. I know they did, but they just appeared somewhere. I don't know. What are you talking about? The snowmobiles. That's your plot hole? Yeah, there was like a bunch of snowmobiles, like apparently a snowmobile for each person, which haven't been anywhere in the movie yet. They weren't in the hangar when he was there. I didn't see them. And now all of a sudden they're here. Okay. Well, I'm sure they have cell phones as well. I don't think you've seen those. I wonder how those got there. They haven't brought out the cell phones. I That's, don't know. They're going to take some liberties every once in a while. I, look, I don't for accept... The sake, for the sake of the storyline being told. I don't accept liberties in these movies why don't we talk about the fact that you completely skipped like the entire like ending of the whole future timeline like you skipped almost all this movie and ended up here in the snow yeah and your one fucking question at all that time the snowmobiles was where did the snowmobiles come from look because last time i had a question about the ending of the future timeline apparently i can't have a question because there's multiple timelines that happen and no matter what you do on this timeline this one still happens so why are you even worried about this one if they're all going to die anyway your fucking timestamp privilege is getting real close to getting revoked I look i don't know i don't uh maybe we look at movies differently stop don't touch sean's little strong Sean, hand what does he have to say about any of this Nothing. Snowmobiles. Where'd the snowmobiles come from? So what are we gonna do? I guess we're gonna cut that son of a bitch open and shoot anything that looks sideways at us. Guys, your secondary perimeter. If we don't come out and something else does, it cannot leave this cave, you understand? So I just thought that was cool, like, they bust out a quickie saw, right? So that's the mm -hmm. the big thing. It's like a gas-powered saw that will cut through basically anything. Mm -hmm. And so on the teams, we always had a quickie saw, and we had it, uh, our the quickie saw was, like, rigged up, so or we had a rucksack frame that was rigged up to carry a quickie saw. So, like, whenever you're going and, like, doing an assault or whatever, you would have a rucksack, or basically a rucksack, essentially, but the frame was rigged up so you could just put the quickie saw on it and just pull it off like to, for quick access. So if you got to gain entry to something like this, one guy has the bag, everybody else has their ruck, this guy's got the quickie saw on, he runs up, pulls it off, cranks it up and <laughs> cuts through and now you got access. That's pretty cool. It's awesome, yeah. I love to be that guy. It's like that, what's that, that zombie movie where that guy's, uh, that, I think it's Bruce Campbell or something, he's yeah. like running around with like his hand as a, as a fucking saw not what i was thinking of i don't know yeah that's what i think of when i think of a guy that can run up and just like saw anything open yeah no well, same thing it was pretty cool well guys that's uh tomorrow war Sick i thought movie. this was a good movie it was an awesome movie it was you know a lot going on it's futuristic you know traveling a lot of time travel back and forth fighting aliens you know there's some good tactics there's some bad tactics there's some realistic a lot of realistic stuff going on I thought this was a pretty good movie. And Sean, he told me in the break he thought it was a good movie as well. You know, so good good on everybody, especially Chris Pratt. Way to go, buddy. Abel, what do you think about the movie? I think time travel is pretty hard to pull off in a lot of movies. And people yeah. typically overcomplicate it. What's the name of that one that Christopher Nolan did recently? Uh, the no. name of it itself is a palindrome, so it's like forward and backwards is the same thing. Uh, I don't know. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen when it comes up. But anyway, that, that one was like an, an example of taking time travel way too far yeah um like the just the forward backwards 
thing I'm a Bob. Like it's easy to screw it up basically is what I'm saying. Yeah. And so they did a good job of um, in injecting the right amount of comedy, the right amount of realistic, um, like you said, realistic tactics to it. And then also throwing in that sci-fi element of it, yeah. but not having it be this overbearing, overcomplicated main thing. So yeah. it allowed you to really get into the movie and sort of like get that escapism thing going. So I thought this movie was really sick and well done. Yeah, it's cool. Good job, everybody, in this movie. Yeah, it was great to see Chris Pat for the first time play this type of character. Um, seems like the only time he's ever done it, but you know he makes a good yeah. soldier, and I think that he, you know, he should really keep that going. He does great with special operations. I think, yeah, definitely carry on with that. Anyways, thanks for watching this episode. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Okay, hang on. We're just gonna keep recording.